And so this life foundation cannot just be comprised of letters and numbers and colors and shapes. This foundation cannot just be based on random facts in school textbooks. This foundation cannot just rely on advice from friends and experiences that you come across. This foundation must be on Jesus. And we only find Jesus in God's Word. That's what our theme for our worship is today, of course, and that's exactly what the Bible says. There's one verse for you again in your bulletin on page 11 under the sermon section. It's from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. No one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. That's our foundation. But what good is that foundation if we start to build on something else? Foundation should be the starting point, of course. The base from which everything else rises. But when we put our weight on something other than Jesus, it will eventually collapse under the stress. Because we, we are weighted down with all kinds of questions and thoughts and worries and problems and issues, are we? Anything other than Jesus might, might lift us up for a little while. Or it's not going to last. It can never pass. So, so what are those things that you tend to be on? What or whom do you look to for support in your life? Your family? Well, you, you don't need me to tell you that even the strongest family members or the best of your friends don't always come through for you. They like me down all the time, don't they? Sometimes, sometimes they're just too unaware of what's going on in your life. Sometimes they're just too busy. Sometimes they're too distracted. Sometimes they're too selfish. Doesn't matter if it's your parents. Doesn't matter if it's your spouse. Doesn't matter if it's your siblings, your friends. No one is capable of dealing with everything that happens to you every single day. That foundation won't last. Maybe you get the habit of leaning on your job for a little bit of a sense of security. Or maybe your savings account. Or, or maybe the success and the happiness and the accomplishments of your children or grandchildren. But those things aren't going to last in the end either. Or jobs can change. Savings can be depleted. Children will grow up and they will move on. And then what? When you are leaning on and trusting in and relying on something and it's taken away, then what are you going to do? I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what you personally cling to for your rock and your anchor in this life, but I can tell you what mine is more often than not. It's myself. Instead of, instead of leaning on Jesus, I lean on and rely on and depend on myself. Why? Because I think I can do it. I can do it. I don't need any help. I am perfectly capable of handling the situation on my own. I am strong enough, or I am smart enough, or I am experienced enough to get the job done. I have the ability to fix this problem. I have the stamina to weather this onslaught. I have the determination to come up out on top. I can do it. I can do it. But I can't. I, I can't do it. And that becomes painfully obvious every time I fail. Because then I'm not so capable anymore. And that becomes painfully obvious every time one of my kids gets sick. Because now I'm not so powerful anymore. And that is painfully obvious every time a problem it's so big and multifaceted that it grows outside of my control because then I'm not so confident anymore. I cannot handle everything that this life throws at me on my own, especially when I'm standing on the wrong foundation. It's about 10 years ago that I was talking with an older couple 
you have to start making some tough decisions as they age. And when it came time for them to move out of their house that they had been living in their entire married life and into assisted living, they despaired over that choice. That house meant everything to them. Their kids were born and raised there. They had made so many memories there. How could they possibly move on and be happy without it? A little while later, the wife died. And the husband was scared again. She meant everything to him. He had spent almost his entire life with her. How could he possibly move on and be happy without her by his side? A little while later, his physical health began to deteriorate. And he despaired yet again. He had been so active in the past. He had worked so hard with his hands throughout his life. How could he possibly move on and be happy without being able to do what he had always done before? And then his mind started to go. And he couldn't remember things. And, and he couldn't think clearly. He couldn't always make decisions on his own. And he despaired over that too. How could he possibly move on and be happy when he could not function the way he wanted to function? His foundations, the things that he was relying on and leaning on and depending on for so long, were crumbling underneath him one by one by one. And you can see how that can happen to us too, whether we're at that stage of life or even far before. Because it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how talented you might be. It doesn't matter how many achievements can be credited to your name. It doesn't matter how far up the ladder you climb. It doesn't matter how good your family is. It doesn't matter how nice your life might be at the moment. Those things cannot be your foundation. You can't be your own foundation. There will always be things too big for you, too complicated for you, too eternal for you. We cannot deal with the catastrophes and the disasters and the losses and the pains that we will encounter in this life on our own, especially when it comes to our own inner issues and our own inner problems and our own inner sin. We need something more than us. We need Christ. Christ is our cornerstone, we just said. On Him alone we build. We must build on the foundation of Jesus because only He is rock solid. Only He never wavers. Only He can support any and every weight. And He does that by taking care of everything in our past. And He's taking care of everything in our present. And he's already set in motion things to take care of in our future. And that's not just wishful thinking. He's proved it. When Jesus was on this earth, He proved He was unshakable for you. Remember the night before He was murdered? Standing in the dark in this olive tree orchard. And he knew that one of his hand-picked disciples was going to betray him. And instead of running away, he walked directly into him. And then later on, when he was being falsely accused by the Jewish leaders of crimes that he did not commit, he didn't try to talk his way out of it, he just took it without a word. And then later on the next day, when the Roman soldiers were brutally torturing him just for the fun of it, Jesus didn't waver. When the Roman governor, spineless as he was, condemned him to crucifixion, Jesus didn't complain. When he was physically nailed to that cross, he didn't protest. When he was mocked, he didn't be pounded. When he was challenged, he didn't give in. When he was bleeding, he didn't blink. When he was dying, he didn't break. Jesus stayed true the entire way because he was determined to die. And not just to make a point, but to make you his own. To, to make you his child through faith in him. To forgive you from everything. To save you from anything. And to guarantee that heaven is not just a dream. But for you, for 
everyone who believes in Him as their Savior, it is already guaranteed because Jesus didn't stop at the cross, of course. Jesus promised He would rise from the dead, so that's exactly what He did. As, as crazy as that sounds, as preposterous as it is to our ears and our minds and our experiences, Jesus had to live. Jesus has to live right now, otherwise He's not our foundation. Otherwise He couldn't be our foundation. But death could not hold Him. The grave could not stop Him. Jesus does live and in faith in Jesus as our Savior, we will too. That's exactly what the preschoolers should say about it. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's our foundation. That's the base from which everything else rises. If Jesus came through for us on the biggest stage there ever was, if Jesus came through for us at a time when the implications were more far-reaching than anything else ever will be, then Jesus will come through for us in the little things of this life too. Jesus won't let you down. He never has. Jesus will never fail you. He never has. Jesus will not crumble. Jesus will not shake. Jesus will not break. He never has. Jesus will be there for you every time you need Him, and He will be there for you when you, when you don't think you need Him at all. Jesus will support you when you collapse. Jesus will lift you up when you're completely exhausted. Jesus will give you that peace, that joy, and that calm that no one else can as this world spins out of control around you. Jesus is the only foundation that has the infrastructure necessary to carry the load, to bear the weight, to clean up the mess of our problems and our issues and our shame and our sin. Only Jesus. Always Jesus. That's our foundation. That's what we are establishing right now as we see. Build on it. Build on that foundation. How? Just as the kids sang before. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. God's word is how we build on this foundation for our faith. Adults, that is very important for you to do. Teenagers, it's very important for you to do. Kids, no matter how old or young you are, it's very important for you to do. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, make sure you are bolstering the foundation of your child's faith with the one thing that tells them about their Savior. The one thing that instills in them the promises of their Savior. The one thing that shows them the victory of their Savior and theirs too. God's Word. Yes, we're doing that now in a worship service. Yes, we do it in Bible study. Yes, we do it in a preschool classroom. But it cannot stop here. Cannot stop in the preschool classroom. It cannot stop on a Sunday morning. This, this is a lifelong pursuit of every one of us to make sure that this foundation is as solid as possible. But there's only one, step, one foundation that matters. There's only one foundation that counts. Only one foundation that will last. Because no one can lay any foundation other than the one 